since we're talking about the media, because he just died at the age of 80. And he certainly was a media person with tremendous integrity. Uh, and since 1968, he had the show Like It Is and, and withheld huge amounts of criticism to give voice to the African American community. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to speak about the, the, the Middle East and the media, so I think it's an, important to say that on many occasions he was anti-Semitism baited, which has brought down many of a career in this country. And when uh, former President Jimmy Carter wrote a book saying that, uh, uh, that there was uh, apartheid, Israeli apartheid on the West Bank, two years later he had to apologize for offending Israel. So he withheld all this when he had Farrakhan over. He was baited and, and people said to him, well, when are you going to tell the other side? And he maintained consistently, we are the other side. And that's the role he played, giving voice to the voiceless in the rest of the media. So um, in, in that spirit, let, let's talk about uh, what's going on, particularly with the Middle East and the media. Um, May mentioned that Karl Marx pointed out in the mid-1800s how the church was the one that was the thought control in, in maintaining class rule because, gee, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's only a few, the, the, the rich and the press, the, the very many, the rest of us, and of course, there's the bodies of arms men that are always there, but they don't like to use them if they don't have to. I mean, why have open class war if you can convince people that what they're doing is really in the interest of, of the oppressed uh, and the workers. So in, 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 in those days, it was the poor always with us, respect authority, don't struggle on earth because the reward is in heaven, the meek shall inherit in the, the earth, but on the day of judgment. That was the way it was kind of phrased. Uh, here it's the media. We're surrounded by the media. We carry it in our pockets in our cell phones. It's all over the place. And it's the media that tells us that it's the individual against the world, that you can't trust the people next to you, much less unite to fight together. That the ruling class is responsible for all progressive social change. That it always was like that and that it will always be like that. That's kind of the general uh, messages I think that we get in a, in a million and one ways. Um, uh, so this report will be specific to how the corporations manipulate the population through the media to justify their wars for profits in the Middle East uh, and how the media also participates in the getting of profits from these wars. Um, and how its racism and xenophobia are imparted from the top down in regard to Arab Americans and in regard to the Middle East. While this is true of all areas of the world where the U.S. have interests, the Middle East is the basis of their greatest profits, so it's more true here. When was this? This was Tuesday, Tuesday. It's never far away. And what, this is meant to elicit this kind of reaction, right? Right? When you look around you, you know, who are the terrorists? If you see something, say something. And then what's the basis of this? It's uh, allegedly, I mean, who knows what the basis of this is, but I'm, I'm just going to go inside and, and read it. Uh, who knows? Because they lie, they lie. Allegedly, this is on some website that they're calling a terror website. So it was somewhere on the web. And they, they even have, uh, this is uh, some, some, some guy from a defense think tank. This is the way they do it. You know, they have their article, they have their little disclaimer. This is some uh, military saying, the chances are that this is mere, mere braggadocio not something that should scare New Yorkers. It's virtually certain that this does not prestage a large-scale attack, AKA 9-11. But there it is. And that's what the media does. That's their role.
At this telling, uh, they're, they're looking for something to justify a direct attack into Syria. Uh, we don't know exactly what's going on as far as, as what they're doing and what they're not. Uh, we do know that uh, the so-called casualty figures that they're citing in regard to Syria are all from the Syrian opposition. Uh, I wrote an article this week where Human Rights Watch, which is certainly no friend of the Syrian government or anyone progressive, has cited the Syrian opposition for assassinations, kidnappings, um, ter essentially terror and, and destabilization attempts, taking over whole neighborhoods, um, uh, creating sectarian strife. Human Rights right Watch has decided the, 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 the groups that the U.S. is funding in Syria for this. This is all the stuff that the media is attributing to the Syrian government. So I think we need to be on the lookout. And before I start, I just want to pass around a picture that's in today's times, uh, which is the kind of picture that, that has uh, made the population here feel that a U.S. intervention in, the, in another country would, would be justified. Uh, and and the, um, the Associated Press, it's a supposedly the, burial, the mass grave burial of, of civilians killed by the, uh, the Assad government. And uh, the, 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 the Times says, the Associated Press published the photograph the authenticity of the photograph could not be confirmed. But here it is, here it is. So uh, they're trying to do something like this, you know, with Syria. Right now. So I'd like to look at some examples where they did that. Now, in the first Gulf War, 1991, was, it was a war to reconquer Iraq after the collapse of the Soviet Union and take back its oil. Uh, the infrastructure was almost completely destroyed by U.S. bombing, and then sanctions followed and 500,000 Iraqis were killed, mainly the very old and the very young, the most vulnerable of the population. How was this war justified? The incubator babies, remember the incubator babies? Uh, uh, there, it was in 1990, a year before the U.S. went in, there was a U.S. Congressional Human Rights Caucus hearing about human rights violations in Iraq. And there was the emotional testimony of a 15-year-old young woman who said that she was a volunteer in the Al-Adam hospital in Kuwait when the, uh, the Iraqi soldiers came in. Iraq uh, did invade Kuwait due to um, uh, some controversy over the oil, which I'm not going to go into right now. Uh, anyway, Iraqi soldiers came into this hospital and they took Kuwaiti babies out of incubators, threw them on the coal floor to die, and made off with the incubators. And in, uh, in, in the, uh, total, they took 312 incubators and just threw the babies on the floor to die. Now, this story was repeated all over the media. It was repeated by all kinds of government officials. It was before Congress again and again and again and again. It was a lie. She wasn't a volunteer. She was an emir's daughter, the daughter of the ambassador, coached by the public relations firm of Hill and Knowlton to make this story. Three months later, the U.S. invaded Iraq. And this incubator story was called the most important, had the most important impact on the U.S. public to either make people for the invasion or to neutralize them here so that the invasion can happen.